I just pressed the wrong button. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the Data Career Podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring data professionals land their next data job. Here's your host, Avery Smith. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Data Career Podcast. Uh, hello, if you are watching live from YouTube or on LinkedIn. Um, just got the notification, looks like, that we're going live. So uh, say hello in the comments. We'd love to uh, see your name and say hello to you guys. Uh, today, I'm really excited about my guest. We have one of the uh, members of the Data Analytics Accelerator who has gone through a portion of the program and landed a pretty sweet job that we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, my guest today is Aaron Sheena. Aaron, welcome to the Data Career Podcast. Thank you, so happy to be here. Yeah, so excited that you uh, agreed to come on the show and talk a little bit uh, about your your journey, which I think is something that's really unique and something that needs to be told because you have a pretty interesting background. Uh, you studied music in school, but you mm -hmm. no longer work in music. So let's start off with what you're currently doing now. What do you do for work now? Sure. So um, I am a financial analyst um, at a healthcare company um, called Humana. Uh, nationwide. Um, and essentially I work in risk adjustment. Um, so basically looking at claims data, the data that comes through anytime you go to the doctor um, and make sure that we're analyzing and filtering it correctly compared to the government agency that runs Medicare um, and making sure that we are kind of aligning with them so that we can predict how much will be reimbursed for caring for those members. Um, and so basically we then take that analysis um, and uh, use it to help us predict revenue and make projections for um, both what we'll get paid for or during this year and then in future years as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the really pared down uh, version of, of what I'm doing in a kind of complicated space, but um, yeah. <laughs> okay, sweet. That's awesome. So basically, you know, you have two music degrees. I think you have a bachelor's and a master's degree. And now I think your official title, is it a financial analyst? Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, it's two bachelor's degrees, actually. I, um, my first one is in just kind of general music and then my music therapy degree is another bachelor's. Um, but, uh, yeah, so even less impressive, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, that's perfect. So, so two different music degrees, a music degree and a music mm -hmm. ther therapy degree. You were working mm -hmm. as a music therapist and now you're able to work as a financial analyst for a mm -hmm. Fortune 50 company, you know, solving problems when it comes to healthcare billing, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, correct. That's awesome. That, and that's the journey. That's a little foreshadowing of what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to get into what your background is and, and how you got to where you're at today. Um, but also it does look like, to, I mean, I'm no expert, you know, I don't work for Humana, but I'm guessing that your background back there is not the Humana offices. So can you tell us a little bit, are you remote? Are you hybrid? Are you in the office right now? Uh, I'm not in the office. I'm in my office um, at home. I am, I'm a hybrid employee. So I do have one office day per week. Um, Humana is like headquartered in Louisville where I'm from. Um, and so my team meets in the office on Wednesdays and, um, which works for me really well since I am a very extroverted person. Um, but the rest of the time I am at home remote. Um, it's actually rare that I'm in my office area instead of on the couch. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that's awesome. Um, and I'm guessing that was not the case as a music therapist. Am I right? Uh, it was not. No, I spent um, every day, even through the pandemic, um, every day at the hospital, spending most of my time in patients' rooms um, sitting with them and, and providing music and, um, you know, going through that therapeutic process. Um, so a remote job was, a a very big change for me. Okay. And, and how has it been? I, I know you mentioned that you're extrovert is, are you lonely at home? Is it, is, do you have get enough interface? Do you get enough support from your team? Yeah, I'm really, really lucky. My team is super, super supportive. Um, we use Microsoft teams, so I, I am my boss constantly. Um, you know, whether she likes it or not, but, um, I, I do feel like I get enough kind of interaction and, um, I really love my team and getting to see them on Wednesdays, but it's also really nice to just kind of 
be relaxed at home while I'm, you know, working on, um, on my analysis and on, you know, all of my, my daily tasks. Um, and it, it feels, it feels very like, right. The pace is still good. I'm still, you know, kind of challenged every day, but it's much different than, um, you know, having to like go into the hospital and, and kind of be part of that crazy environment. That's awesome. I, I love hearing that because I love that you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm in my, my own office today, but to be <laughs> honest, my real home office is my couch. I think that's awesome um, that you have the opportunity, you know, the commute in the morning from the bedroom to the couch must be very, mm -hmm. you know, full of traffic and stuff like that. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, all jokes aside, you had to deal with like a commute. You had to deal with traffic in your last, last job, right? That was a, a, a mm -hmm. decent amount of driving. Yeah, I, I'm very lucky that I live close to the hospital um, where I was working, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, I still had to get on the interstate um, and, you know, make my way. Um, sometimes traffic was worse than others, but it's, yeah, I, uh, I much prefer when my dog is the only one that's in my way trying to, <laughs> trying to get to the office now. <laughs> Yeah, that that is awesome. Um, I also have a dog, and I can testify mm -hmm. of the power of having your your dog as your coworker. It is like so mm -hmm. much fun. Um, and and now, I mean, one of the things that you probably couldn't do as easily when you were doing the hospital visits is like, for instance, oh, let's take let's take the dog out for a walk, or you know, I got to feed the dog, or I got to take the dog outside, or something like that. So I imagine that's gotten a lot easier since you've been able to work remotely. Yes. Yeah. Basil, my dog is, uh, she's, her quality of life has increased even more than mine. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And that's what matters most, right? We don't, we don't really care about our own lives. It's just about our pups. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Um, and you mentioned that you're able to, I am your boss and that communication is going well. Cause one of the questions I get is, you know, I want a remote job, but I'm also new to this field. Um, and I'm kind of nervous that like, I'm not going to be able to get enough training or get enough support for my team. You felt like that's been pretty good at Humana then? Yes. Yeah. Um, my boss is a really, really wonderful mentor. Um, and the, the kind of professional and personal development that um, my company invests in um, has been a really, really good support. Um, there are lots of like modules and things that are provided just like by default from the company. Um, but then also my boss has been really wonderful and, you know, we'll hop on a zoom and I'll share my screen and, you know, I'll say like this, th I think this is what's giving me a problem, but, um, I can't, you know, figure out what I need to change or, you know, what is, what does this actually mean? Um, and she can tell me and she'll kind of help me puzzle through it and, and figure out, um, you know, where I went wrong or how I should approach it in the future or what, what to tweak. Um, and so that's really, really helpful. That's awesome. So you not only have like your boss, you're able to, you know, message anytime you get stuck, but you also have some sort of provided learning so that you're not like stuck with the skills that you're at right now. You can kind of upskill mm -hmm. as you go. It sounds like as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. My, uh, my next thing to tackle is, um, getting into some Python for like moving data from one place to another. So, um, I'm excited to get started on that in the next couple of weeks. Sweet. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, okay. Awesome. So actually while, while you mentioned Python, let's talk mm -hmm. about as, you know, an entry level financial analyst new to the field, what type of, what type of tools are you using on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. So biggest one is SQL. Um, we use SQL server, um, and kind of the whole like Microsoft suite, all of that. Um, lots of Excel for the kind of like financial part of it. Um, but most of my analysis and most of the testing that we're doing is within SQL. Um, and yeah, that's been, it's been really fun to kind of take uh, the skills that I know, like uh, just in my own little like simple projects into, you know, actual like millions and millions of rows of data um, and, you know, see, see how it translates. Yeah. Um, I'm sure some yeah. of it is very similar. <laughs> like, like you kind of have the base for it, but it's probably like mm -hmm. you're doing things you might not have necessarily expected, um, and using things kind of in a new way with this, with this new application. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. There, and there's a lot of, um, kind of logical, like analytical thinking. Um, and you know, that's part of the learning curve of, of going into, you know, this specific industry, um, like healthcare, 
I thought, you know, being in the hospital every day, I thought I knew all of the acronyms um, that came with like the medical, you know, field. Um, but apparently I didn't. Health insurance is like totally different. So um, yeah, lots of acronyms, um, lots of kind of the the logical analytical thinking to get from point A to point B and then figure out how to get there in SQL. Yeah. Okay. I love that. And that's something that we didn't necessarily talk about. We, we I mean, we mentioned your background, we mentioned your music degrees. We, we mm -hmm. said the term music therapy a couple of times. I wasn't familiar with music therapy beforehand. So um, maybe if you don't mind, will you just give like a, a quick introduction to what you were doing? You kind of mentioned it earlier, but if I was, if I was a five-year-old, what is music therapy? Sure. So, um, you know, the go-to line, I guess, is that music therapy is using music to accomplish non-musical goals. So um, in the hospital, what I was doing most of the time was using music for decreasing pain, decreasing anxiety, um, kind of providing that additional emotional support um, that people often don't get, um, especially when they're going through something that is, you know, potentially like traumatic and scary for them, like being in the hospital. Um, and, you know, we worked really closely with our like hospice and palliative care team. Um, so a lot of uh, folks who are going through kind of the end of life process. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what my, my daily life was like. Yeah. And, and I think that's important to realize because one of the tips that we, that we talk about throughout the data analytics accelerator is, can we find you a stepping stone job, right? Because you're new to this world of, of data, right? You're, you're new to this world of data. You had no prior you know, math jobs or science jobs, right? It was, it was the music stuff, right? Um, but you were able to land this, this financial analyst role pretty quickly, like within, within about 90 days. I was looking, I was trying to look, find our exact, when you told me you had the interview and you had the offer. Um, and when you joined, you joined like right before Christmas. And then I think you started working like mid-March, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I like, you know, signed up, um, clicked submit or whatever on the accelerator package, like right before Christmas, um, started actually like doing the program right after Christmas, like the week before Christmas and New Year's. Um, and I, I think my job, the interview was on March 1st, um, which was a Wednesday or whatever the Wednesday was that week. And then that Friday I accepted my offer. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> yeah, I was uh, not expecting that. Um, that's but... not even, that's not even 60 days because February is not even 30 <laughs> days. Right. So that's basically, right. yeah. So that's awesome. Um, and absolutely incredible. Congratulations. I cut you, you off. Keep, keep ta talking <laughs> us through that, through that journey. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, I should back up and say that part of what I was doing, um, before, Kind of getting into the into the accelerated boot camp, um, you know, when I was looking into data analytics as a potential, you know, career move, um, I did kind of what anybody does and just Googled it um, and landed on the Google the Coursera like Google mm -hmm. data analytics program, mm -hmm. um, and I was doing that for a while. I think I started that sometime in the summer um, last year. Felt. Um, like I was understanding things. Um, I didn't, I didn't have any, you know, foundational knowledge besides like using Excel for budgeting. Um, and, you know, I think it was a really good introduction into like, what is data analytics and all of that sort of thing. But I didn't, um, I made it like three quarters of the way through, but I didn't feel like I could like actually apply my knowledge in a way that was um, helpful for me. I was like, understanding it as I was going through, but there wasn't a lot of like, there weren't any steps after that. So um, I was looking for something that was just more hands-on and more like active for me. Um, that's how I tend to learn best. And so I was, you know, just kind of looking to see what was out there. And um, I think, I think you had a sale going on. I saw on LinkedIn and I was like, that sounds good. <laughs> um, you know, most boot camps are like, five grand plus. And, you know, that's not something that in my previous job that I could even consider budgeting for, um, in any kind of, you know, uh, reasonable timeline for wanting to make a career move. So, um, I was like, sounds great, 
this guy's cool. I'm going to just do this and see where it goes. <laughs> um, and so from there, that's kind of when I uh, started like doing, doing the analytics accelerator bootcamp um, and the curriculum. And I think it, that is what really made a big difference for me. Yeah, I, I think I think your story is, you know, very similar. In fact, someone emailed me today and said, you know, how is your program different than the Google data cert, um, which is which is a common question. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I think you kind of nailed it, like actually applying what we're what you've learned. Right. Um, and then really focusing on creating the projects and the networking, right? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if you don't have the projects, you don't have the network. It's a lot harder to land that job. And then also just doing mm -hmm. it kind of with someone, like someone that's able to, you know, talk to you. I know you were pretty active on our community. So having all the peers around you, uh, I think I think that's pretty helpful for, for most people. Um, and the other thing you did really well is, and I mean, I, I think this was helpful. You can tell me if, I, if I'm wrong, um, but you were trying to land a data job. You know, you don't have necessarily the, what people would consider the traditional or the ideal background. I don't think there is a traditional or ideal background for data analytics, but that's, that's besides mm -hmm. the point. Um, but you found this job inside of healthcare and you have been working in healthcare as this music therapist. You've been visiting hospitals. Like you said, you know, hospital speak a little bit like the acronyms and stuff like that. Did that play a role in helping you land this job? Like, was that helpful to know the hospital stuff? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, especially during my interview process, that was something that I spoke to a lot, um, you know, and having kind of that background knowledge of just how the industry works um, and understanding like, yeah, I might not know like the back end of health insurance, but I know like what these things mean. And I know, you know, kind of why things are set up the way that they are, um, even if I don't know the details of like how, how it works on the back end. Um, and one of the projects I think that really helped me kind of be able to speak to that was the SQL project um, in the accelerator, the um, healthcare analysis. That was something that I talked about in all of the interviews that I had. Um, and they were really, really interested to know, you know, not only to see that I had some SQL skills, but also just to see like that I had used my prior knowledge and like um, how I had applied that understanding of the industry to the analysis, like with SQL. Um, so that I think was really, really helpful for me. Um, in, yeah. in that whole interview process. Gosh, I actually, I mean, I should have realized that, but I didn't even, I didn't <laughs> even realize that. And that's so cool because they were like, Hey, we're hiring for a financial data analyst role. The The hope is that someone will understand data analytics. They'll understand SQL and they'll, they'll understand hospital or I guess healthcare data. And you were like, mm -hmm. Oh, well, here's a project I've done that you can read where I analyzed I can't remember how much data is in that one, like 1 1.6 million rows of hospital mm -hmm. data and like looked at outcomes and like looked at like what procedures led to these different things and how race played a role in the hospital and stuff like that. And you were like, just here you go. This is this is my evidence. Right. Are you interested? Uh -huh. that, right. that must have been really powerful for the recruiter. They're like, oh, wow. Uh, SQL project with healthcare data. I'm, I'm sure they didn't have very many other projects like that. If I were to guess, I don't know. But if I were to guess. I I don't know who else applied, but apparently I did something right. So <laughs> yeah, because because you interviewed and then like three days later had an offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Cong that's yeah. so amazing. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, what one of the things I just want to I want to highlight um, that makes mm -hmm. me so happy to hear because when I was designing the the analytics accelerator, I was like, okay, we have to do projects. And to be perfectly honest, I. Uh, when I first got into helping people land data jobs, I, I had the same philosophy that projects were the way, but I had a little bit of a different twist where I was like, projects should be fun. It's always fun to do your own personal data. So when I originally launched my bootcamp, all of the projects were actually from your own life, like your own screen mm -hmm. time on your phone, the data, the, the music you listen to, you know, and stuff like that. And that, those projects were really fun. And I think they were very impressive to recruiters and hiring managers. They were a little bit harder because it's just hard to keep getting your own data. But now that we've transitioned to, you know, using data from all the different industries, I'm so happy to hear that we, I, when I was choosing the nine industries for the nine projects, I was like, man, there's so many industries. Which ones do we choose? And I'm so glad to hear that the healthcare 
and the sequel combo was at least useful for one person. That's so good. To yes. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, and actually, I think just having the projects in general and having the specific, um, like specific tools for a specific project, um, I think was really, really helpful. Um, and, you know, maybe just also to highlight another aspect of the boot camp. Um, I think the difference for me, I was applying to things um, kind of, you know, throughout the whole, uh, the time that I was, you know, doing all the modules. Um, and I wasn't really getting a lot of bites and, you know, kind of trying to network and, and get referrals for, for jobs. But um, I think the thing that made the difference was having, <laughs> I went to one of your, um, I don't remember if it was a live session or just a module, but um, all about resumes and like optimizing your resume. Um, and so I added like, literally as I was watching, I was like, okay, I'm gonna add these links to my portfolio projects. I'm gonna add, you know, a blurb about what I learned, what I analyzed what I and why um, and what I found. Um, and I like sent off a round of, of applications kind of with that new resume with my projects added like an actual section not just a link to my um to my portfolio site and i like literally had three interviews lined up for like that same week wow. from just that difference um and that was you know one of the one of those interviews that i had is the role that i ended up accepting so and yeah. did you did you apply to that job or did did they find you so I applied for it. Um, I have, I know several people that also work for Humana and I had someone who was willing to let me be a, um, or be, you know, my referral. Um, so definitely worked kind of with my network and, and connecting with people, um, to get my in, um, Humana is a company that I have, you know, uh, considered working for, for, for a long time. Um, and, you know, I know, just from having those personal uh, relationships with people here um, that they're, they treat their employees really well. And so I was like, Oh yeah, that's like a company I really want to work for. So um, that's kind of how I was focusing my, my networking attention. Um, but yeah, I had very, very quick turnaround from submitting those applications to hearing from recruiters for the, the specific positions. Okay. There's a lot there I want to unpack. Um, Number one, did you apply uh -huh. on like LinkedIn jobs indeed or on their website? On their website. Okay. Um, so I found them on LinkedIn, but I went to the website to apply. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Two, um, one of the things I want to, I want to highlight here is, um, I don't know if you remember this, but the job, the job description, it probably said hybrid on the job description. Do you think, or do mm -hmm. you say, okay. And I want to highlight that because. I've no, this is like a super underrated play that everyone is sleeping on right now. And that's the idea of hybrid jobs. Everyone mm -hmm. is like, oh, I don't want to be in person. Right. So they, they go and they go to LinkedIn jobs. They use the Boolean search for a remote mm -hmm. and they're competing with literally thousands of other people for these remote jobs because literally you can be all over the U S or the world. Right. And be an applicant for this job. Mm -hmm. But like your role you're in the office, like what, eight hours a week on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to like, you know, work from home from, you know, the rest of the days you can, if you want to, I don't know Humana's exact policy, but let's just say you want to go visit your, your parents or I don't know your brother, right. You could, you could go, mm -hmm. you could leave Wednesday night and come back home, you know, Tuesday night. Like that's like a week that you could be working somewhere else. Like you're not quite remote, but you're 90% there, right? I guess, I guess literally right. 75%, right? Or what, 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 80% there. Um, yeah, 80, but, yes. <laughs> but it's, but it's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and like I said, I am a really extroverted person. So I really like, you know, I, I think we get less done on Wednesdays than we do like when we're all remote, um, you know, cause we're catching up with each other and, uh, you know, socializing a little bit. Um, but, yeah, we have, my team has a lot of freedom outside of those, those, uh, in-person days. And, you know, if you do need to take a, a remote day, that's also fine. Um, you know, I had a coworker yesterday who was like, yeah, I just, 
I'm not feeling super well, not well enough to not work, but can I just stay home today? And mm. my team was like, oh, yeah, of course, just call into the meeting that we have and we'll be fine. Um, so that, there's a lot of flexibility there. And that's, and that's awesome. And I think people are like, no, I only want a remote job. But the hard thing is like when you're doing a remote job, you're competing with people you know, not only in Louisville, right? You're competing with people all over the country, but if you're hybrid, mm -hmm. that job pool that they're selecting from the Canada pool is so much smaller. And so you can stand mm -hmm. out so much more as a candidate. Um, the third thing I want to mention is, you know, you mentioned the referral and people are mm -hmm. going to be like, well, okay, I don't know anyone, you know, I don't, no one's going to refer me, but the people that referred you were, what part of the company do they work for? Uh, not mine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, there are several organizations kind of within Humana, um, and they are in one that is parallel with mine, but they are not in finance at all. Um, and so, you know, they, I even asked her, she, she like looked into some of the jobs when I was talking with her and she was like, yeah, I don't know these hiring managers. Um, but I know this person who, um, you know, worked with this other person, and, you know, she kind of connected some dots, but she, I didn't know, she didn't know anyone personally who was like in charge of hiring or, you know, the next like three steps up, um, from my manager. So, um, yeah, I think it's a powerful thing to, even if you aren't, if you can get a referral from someone, um, even if they aren't directly involved with the position that you're applying for, I think it's really, really worth it to try to, you know, still build those relationships and, um, and see if they can help you out. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like when I'm working with a lot of people, they're like, Avery, I don't know anyone to get referrals. And the answer to that is bull crap. Unless you're like, you're brand <laughs> new to the country and you've never like, you don't speak English or like you haven't really met people <laughs> like you at least know someone who works somewhere. And sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes that person's going to work at, like as a grocer at like, at like <laughs> Smith's family grocer. And like, that's not going to be useful, but like you probably have at least, you know, 20 contacts in your phone, like open up your phone and go through <laughs> one by one and just be like, okay, Paul Adams, where does he work? Alejandra Okerlund, where does he work? Paul Alstrom, where does he work? You know, and think through, do these people work for a company that have an opening for a data analyst? Yes or no. And if they mm -hmm. do, it doesn't matter if they're in, marketing or if they're in sales or if they're, you know, really doesn't really matter because the company just wants to kind of hire good people. And if that person's at that company, that's probably because they think that person's a good person. And so if that person mm -hmm. has a friend, that's probably also another good person. And so just having any sort of referral from any company employee, I think is worth exploring. And I think it gives you a leg up in the application. So I think a job well done from you because you went for the hybrid, you went for the referral, and I mean, that's what allows you to, you know, do an interview and then bam, you have an offer like two days later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it wasn't a short process, you know, from uh, starting getting into data at all to, um, you know, accepting a job offer. But I think um, the, the, the steps that I took in the last you know, a couple of months of that journey, um, really, really made the difference. And, um, yeah, a lot of it was kind of prompted by the accelerator program. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, of course. We're, I'm so glad it worked out for you. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Before we let you go, I gotta ask you a few more questions about the interview. Was it, sure. was it technical? No. Um, so, uh, and maybe part of it was because I had projects to kind of show what I knew. Um, but we didn't, there wasn't like an assessment for me, um, for any of the jobs that I interviewed for, you know, kind of in that round of interviewing. Um, I talked about my projects a lot. They asked questions about the projects themselves and kind of specifically what like I learned. the projects you had done. Yes. Yeah. So, um, the, the healthcare one, um, I talked about, um, oh, I forget which is which now, but, um, I talked about the, I think, Massachusetts education yeah. one. Uh -huh. um, I talked about that one. I talked a little bit about the data visualization one that I had on my portfolio, but um, yeah, I like, they would ask me specific questions about, you know, like, what was your process with this? What did, you know, how did you come to this conclusion based on this data and um, things like that, rather than like, you know, here is 
a data set can you query this like i didn't have to do any of that like really really technical stuff i think because they could see that i knew you know how to at least do a select from where statement and then they could ask me those deeper level questions um, yeah based on my portfolio i think that's so powerful because one of the things we talk about in daa is the a lot of times the people interviewing you are busy people and they don't want to mm -hmm. be interviewing you and so they're coming in with <laughs> questions five minutes before they're actually doing the interview that's not true of everyone but a lot of the times i've i've hired people and i know that i've done that before and so mm -hmm. sometimes if you give them projects all of a sudden you just gave them material for them to ask you questions about and you kind of flip the interview where you're you've almost made the interview about stuff that you know and stuff that you've done versus them just like randomly asking you questions um which I think is really, it makes it way less nerve wracking and it makes you look more impressive. So I think, I think that's mm -hmm. a win-win. So overall you felt prepared and it was just the, the one interview. Uh, yes. So for the role that I had, um, it, it was in person, um, which was helpful for me. Um, because I, I tend to do really well when I'm talking to people and, um, feel less nervous than, you know, if I'm, um, if it's like a phone interview or something like that. Um, but we did, it was one day, um, but interviews with several people on the team. Um, but we had really similar conversations kind of between that um, as pertains to kind of their role and, and the difference between the role that they're hiring for. Um, but yeah, I felt really prepared. I felt um, like I knew what I was talking about kind of going in. I obviously had done these whole projects and could speak on them. Um, and so that made me feel really confident in my skills and also in my like, you know, presence and, and being able to really engage with them, um, instead of being worried about, you know, am I going to remember how to like what the syntax is for this, you know, specific thing that they're going to ask me about. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, I love that the projects brings confidence. That's an important takeaway. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, we did have a question here. Um, you can answer this to your heart's content um, as much as, <laughs> as you do or not. Um, but the question is, did you feel the need to negotiate or were you pretty happy uh, with your offer? So um, as I mentioned, I had interviews for three different roles, um, kind of, you know, all at the same time. Um, it was that like last round of applications that I sent in after changing my resume. Um, had all those interviews within you know, that same week, the, um, the ones on that Wednesday were the last ones. Um, and a, the recruiter contacted me, um, and actually said that I had, um, gotten offers from all three and that they wanted to, that they wanted to, um, you know, see what was my preference and that sort of thing. And I didn't negotiate with numbers necessarily, but I said that a, um, salary would put play a, a part in my decision of which role to take. Um, and so I asked if they could give me, you know, a range for each one. Um, so they came back with that and, um, you know, told me the ranges of what, what they could offer for each role. Um, and then I was really happy that the, the one that I had wanted the most did actually have, you know, the highest offer as well, the highest range. Um, and so I, you know, happily took that one. Um, so I didn't have to necessarily negotiate. Um, and then when I like accepted that offer, they um, said it was going to be the the highest end of the of the range they'd given me. They just gave me that top number. Um, so so you, got what, you got what you wanted. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't have to like, you know, negotiate like face to face with somebody, but, um, you know, letting them know that that was an important part of my decision. I, I think that's good. Um, we, you know, a lot of people will talk about negotiating. Um, and I think I'm probably not the the best teacher of negotiation, if I'm being honest. I've never really mm -hmm. negotiated that much. But so many students in our program have just been so happy with the offer that they get that that I mean, negotiating is always probably a good idea. Uh, but anyways, a lot of people have just been super happy that they're like, I'll take it. I'm so, so stoked <laughs> with this. Right. If someone offered me $10 million right now to go work for them. I'm not negotiating. I've taken the $10 million. <laughs> right. And, and I mean, uh, kind of the same idea there. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll end with this, uh, any advice that you'd like to give to people with non-traditional backgrounds, 
people with um, maybe music backgrounds, what what would you mm-hmm. say and in, in, that has helped you in your journey or what, what advice would you give them? Yeah. Um, so uh, number one piece of like actionable advice is to do projects, um, do projects that are based on skills that you have or, you know, the industry that you have. And then also ones that um, show that you have knowledge for where you want to go. Um, so if it's healthcare, if it's, um, you know, marketing, like whatever you're trying to kind of break into, do projects with that. Show that you know how to use the technical skills um, in that industry. Um, and then just in general, I think um, something that I realized through my journey was that even if you are like just starting and you don't really have a whole lot of like foundational knowledge um, to go off of, you are um, more capable and you know a lot more than you think that you do. Um, You know, everything transfers to everything else. Um, I guarantee that there's something that you like do in your daily job that relates to, you know, your, your data analytics learning. Um, And I think that if you have started on this journey and, you know, are, um, even if you are at the beginning, you've done the hard part of like making the decision and starting. Um, And so now it's just about consistency and, you know, keeping that going. I, I love that. I hope you guys listening, take that to heart. Keep in mind, that was a music therapist telling you that you have something in your current job that is relatable to data analytics. If you ask me like the most opposite of a data analytics job ever, I might say (laughs) a music therapist, but you're absolutely right, Aaron, that no matter what you're doing, you can relate something to what you're currently doing. It is experience Mm -hmm. for a data analyst job. So, you know, don't be discouraged when you see, you know, one to two years of experience, two to five years of experience, you have some sort of experience Mm -hmm. that you can draw. And I loved the advice uh, on doing projects. So uh, Aaron, thanks so much for being on the show. Uh, we'll have your LinkedIn down below in the show notes so that people can connect with you. And uh, just so excited for you and your journey, Aaron. Thanks for sharing it with all of us here. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, great. Thanks everyone for listening. If you guys were listening live on YouTube or LinkedIn, uh, we just want to say hello to you guys. Um, also, if you guys did not know, I'm doing a live version of the Data Analytics Accelerator. Um, starting on Monday. And I want you guys to be part of that um, awesome program. We're going to be, if you guys are like, I want some more guidance, I want some more community. We're doing two hour live sessions every Monday. And then where I'm going to be building the projects that Aaron talked about, we're going to build the SQL hospital project. We're going to build uh, the DoorDash marketing project. We're going to build the education Tableau project all together on those Monday sessions. And then we're doing a live office hour on Thursdays. So if you're interested, you can go to datacareerjumpstart.com slash DAA, or you can just send me a DM on LinkedIn and I'll get you the stuff you need. So I just want to make sure you guys know, because that is an opportunity that um, I haven't done before where I'm actually building the projects and I'm going live for three hours every week with you guys. So uh, hopefully that's that's pretty exciting. Um, Great. Aaron, anything else? No, I don't think so. Thanks so much for having me and uh, good luck, everybody listening. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Bye, everyone. See you.